been to like a sporting event or, or like a like a big game or, or I know you've watched one on TV, like a basketball game or baseball game, soccer, or even hockey. And when someone scores, what do everyone do? What does everyone do? Whether you're at home or at the game, most of the time what people do is they jump up out of their chairs and they go, yeah, and they shout as loud as they can. They're excited because of what has just happened. They're excited because their team has scored. And even they shout in that victory because they have won. I know you've done that. You've probably done that too when you've won. You're like, yes, Soderly won. This is awesome. But let me ask you a question. Would that make sense if you cheered right before the score? Like someone's playing soccer and they're, they're kicking the ball and they're almost to the box and, and you know that they're going to about kick that ball and hit into the goal. And so you jump up and yell, go! And then just as you do that, the player kicks the ball and here comes the goalie and catches it. Does that work? Does that make you feel good? No. Oh. Makes you feel awkward. Just the other day, I was watching a football game and they they threw a, uh, they threw the pass and it was like, oh, that defender's totally going to catch that. That's a touchdown, and the ball flew right through his hands. It didn't make sense to call it a touchdown. You see, it doesn't make sense for us to uh, celebrate the victory before the victory actually happens. In fact, in sports, they tell you not to do that. They tell you, you can't celebrate the victory. You can't, uh, my, my dad always told me when he was teaching me how to play baseball, you can't anticipate getting a hit. You actually have to hit the ball. You can't anticipate catching the ball. You actually have to catch the ball before you move on to the next thing. But that's actually opposite of what God calls us, to, calls us to do. God actually wants us to celebrate the victory before it happens. That shout before you see the victory. Now that might sound weird, but that's actually what God told Joshua to do right before he did, right before the, at the battle of Jericho. God told Joshua, hey, get the ram's horns and blow as loud as you can and shout. And what they did is they shouted for victory while the wall still stood super tall and super big and looking impenetrable. But they shouted for joy anyway. And what did God do? God knocked down the walls and the Israelites ran in and got an incredible victory over these people of Jericho that no one thought could even be possible. That is incredible. But they shouted for the victory before it ever happened. Now in your life, if you're going through a bad time, if bad things are happening to you, Go ahead and claim the victory now. Go ahead and shout to God and and thank God for what he's going to do. Thank God for the miracle that's going to happen. That's what God wants us to do. He wants us to claim, to shout the victory. Now, I can't say that like, God, I know your victory is going to happen. I know this is going to, this is totally going to work. And then it absolutely does. I can't speak in any absolutes because that's not the way that God works. But I can say that God wants us to shout for the victory and be excited and look for God to do a miracle. He wants us to do that. Now, we need to shout because God has won the victory. Because no matter what's going on in your life, no matter what's how bad things may have get, we can always shout because God has won the victory. You see that at the beginning, there was an ultimate battle for your life. At the beginning of your life, there was a battle. And at the beginning of everyone's life, there was a battle. And the battle was against an enemy we call the devil. And the devil wants to trick you. He's been trying to trick you your entire life. He's been trying to get you to to lie, to steal, to disobey your parents. He's been trying to make you feel discouraged and, and make you feel like you're all alone. That has been his job and that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to stop you from stop from following Jesus because the Bible actually says that he the devil is like a roaring lion and he wants to steal, kill and destroy you. You're like how is this possible? What are we going to do? How are we going to fight something we can't see but we know is attacking us? Well, see, you don't have to fight because 
God has already won the victory. He's already won the battle. When Jesus died on the cross for all of our sins and he paid the ultimate price by him doing that and then rising from the dead three days later and becoming alive, he won the battle. He won the victory. And now he shares that victory with all of us. So when you're feeling upset and you're feeling sad and lonely or you're anxious and you're afraid, you know what you got to do? You just tell the devil, you got to get out of here in Jesus' name. I know that God is with me. And you know what happens is the devil has to leave because Jesus has already won. He is the master. He is the ultimate guy and he is by your side. And Paul actually wrote in Romans, he said, he said, if God is for you, then who could possibly against you? Who could possibly be against you? And God loves you and he is for you. And no one or nothing can be against you. If I can't see any other reason to shout, I don't know what is. So let's pray and let's thank God that he has won the victory. God, thank you so much. Thank you that we have won the victory. And even though bad things happen in our lives and, and bad things have happened and bad things will happen, we know that you have won the victory and that we ha can have hope in you, God, that you will do a miracle and that you are the king of everything and that everything is within your control. And even though it may not work out the way we want it to be, it's still out the way, the plan that you want it to be. And that doesn't make sense. And a lot of times that, that doesn't bring comfort, but we know, God, that you love us and you are for us and you sent your son to die for us and he rose again on the third day and he has won the victory. We believe that and we put our trust and our hope in you. It's your name we pray, amen. You know, this, this whole talk reminds me of a song. It's called Great Are You, Lord? And in part of that song, they says, we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise to you because it's God's breath that's in our lungs. And so we pour out our praise. Let's sing this song together. Great Are You, Lord? Give life. 